In this video, I show you Fusion's macro tools, which allow you to collapse cl complex multi-tool effects into a single tool, which exposes only a few select inputs and controls. Now I have a simple technique I often use to create pixelated images for motion graphics and backgrounds. It is composed of three tools, a downscale, which we use to resize the image down, an upscale, and a rank filter for painterly effects. The center of the effect is the nearest neighbor filter, which makes sure that the scale is not soft. I've also added a scale input to the downscale, so I've added a new slider, which I did using the user control script, and I've created a scale numeric slider on the controls page with a default value of 1 and a range from 1 to 100, and I made sure the allowed range has a minimum of 1, so I never scale below 1. And the way I use that is I'm going to add a simple expression to the size control. And I'll use that as 1. So if the scale, for example, is set to 10th, I want it to be 1 tenth or 0.1 scale. So it's 1 divided by scale. We're going to do the same on the upscale, but we'll keep the, maintain the same value for the scale. So in other words, whenever we set the scale to 10, the first, the downscale, will scale it by 1 tenth, and then the upscale will scale it to 10, returning us to our original native resolution. Because we use nearest neighbor, that's going to produce a very pixelated result. Now we use the rank filter in order to provide something of a uh, painterly effect, so I can use it to filter the image and change the weighting of those pixels. Of course, making changes to this effect requires jumping around between three different inputs. So we've created a pixelate macro, which will allow us to expose just the inputs that are necessary to this. So in this case, scale, filter size, and rank, plus a small description, so helping uh, people who might use my macro who aren't me, or to remind me later. The way we create that macro is, first off, we're just going to check on each of the tools that the inputs are what we want them to be in our macro, so that when you add the macro for the first time, all the inputs are set up the right way. I also put in the comments the description of how the tool works. Then I select all three tools, I make sure that uh, the input for my macro tool is connected, and then I select Macro, Create Macro from the Tool Context menu. That brings up this macro editor dialog, and you can see down, rank, and up are all listed. In fact, the input for down is already exposed because it was connected to an external tool when we created the macro. By check selecting the checkbox next to scale, we expose the scale input. We also can make a, expose the rank tool's uh, size, but we're going to rename it to filter size in case um, people are confused about what that filter is doing. Then, of course, we check that up is going to expose its output so that we have some way of seeing the output of the macro tool. We rename it to pixelate and then select File Save, which will save it in Fusion's macro folder. And then we click Save and we're done. Go ahead and click Close. Now, that got saved as a .settings file in the Fusion macro folder. If you go into Preferences and look under the Global panel, you're going to see the Path Map panel. In the path map panel, you'll see macros. And you can see that here, the macros are set to all docs macros, which is the uh, system's uh, all users documents folder, and fusion macros, which is the fusion install. That's a multi-path map. And if we take a look, we can see that that is just a dot setting file or a text file containing a description of all of the tools and which outputs are exposed. And we'll go back to that text file in a moment. Now, of course, where do we find this macro? In the Tools folder under Macro. So you notice I didn't have to reload. Uh, Fusion automatically detects new macros that are added into the macro folders. And here's our macro tool with its scale, filter size, and rank. But there's something missing here. It seems we forgot to expose our description. So we've created a macro, now we need to edit it. We right click in an empty part of the flow, select Edit Macro, and then Pixelate. And that opens up that macro editor dialog again. We can now go into the Up Tools comments, we'll rename that to Description, and we'll expose that. Now the change we've just made isn't going to affect macros which have already been added to this composition or even to previous compositions. Instead, the change is unique to new macros that are added to the flow. And you can see there's our description we've just added. Now, the problem here is that I can't see the inputs or the three tools that make up this macro. They're hidden away from me. They don't have to be, though. 
What I can do is copy that tool into the clipboard, open up a new text editor, paste it into that text editor. You'll see the third line of any macro tool is a uh, function called macro operator. Rename that to group operator instead, and now you've got sort of a hybrid group and macro. I also want the description to appear at the top, so I'm going to reorder the contents of the ordered inputs table, and uh, I'm placing the description up near the top. Now, of course, uh, when we add this macro in now, you'll see first off that there's a little icon to expose the contents of the macro if we need to go in and play with the controls that are inside there. Additionally, uh, you'll see that the description is up on top. Of course, to make those changes permanent, you would just re-edit the original settings file. And that concludes our macros video.